This is a tutorial on arithmetic sequences. An arithmetic sequence is just a sequence where each term increases or decreases through addition by the same amount. So if we look at our first sequence here, 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20, to go from 4 to our second term, 8, we would have to add 4 to our first term. Now to go from our second term to our third term, or 8 to 12, again, we would have to add 4. From 12 to 16, we would also have to add 4. And from 16 to 20, we would also have to add 4. Now because we're adding 4 each time we go to the next term in our sequence, and we're always adding 4, then this is an arithmetic sequence. Let's look at our second example here. We have the sequence 1, 2, 4, 7, and 11. Well, using addition, if I want to go from 1 to 2, I have to add 1. To go from 2 to 4, I would have to add 2. To go from 4 to 7, I would have to add 3. And from 7 to 11, I would have to add 4. Now, we are adding each time, but we're not adding the same amount. We're adding a different amount, actually increasing amounts each time. So because these amounts are not constant, this is not an arithmetic sequence. The formula for an arithmetic sequence can be written in one of two ways. It can be written as a recursive formula or an explicit formula. A recursive formula always includes previous terms in the formula. The recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence always looks like a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus d, and we're usually given a value for the first term in the sequence, a1. Now again, a n is just any given term in our sequence, and then a n minus 1 would be the term previous to that. So if a n was the third term in our sequence, then a n minus 1 would be the second term in our sequence. Now d is called the common difference. It's the number that we add each time to get the next value in our sequence. So if we're going from 4 to 8, we would add 4. From 8 to 12, we would add 4. From 12 to 16, we would add 4. And from 16 to 20, we would add 4. And that means our common difference is 4. The recursive formula for this arithmetic sequence, then, would be a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus 4. Now, an arithmetic sequence can also be written as an explicit formula. An explicit formula, instead of using previous terms, instead uses the position of each term. So any term in our sequence, a n, would be equal to the first term in our sequence plus the position of that term minus 1 times d, where again d is our common difference. If I was looking for the third term, so a3, then that would be equal to the first term plus n, where n is 3, minus 1, so 2, times our common difference. If I wanted to write this arithmetic sequence as an explicit formula, it would look like a n is equal to a1, which in this case is 4, plus n minus 1, times d, which is our common difference, which is 4. Now you could simplify this, but this is the explicit formula for this arithmetic sequence. Now the last thing we have to talk about with arithmetic sequences is the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean is the sum of two numbers over 2. Now we can use this to find the halfway point between two terms. Now here again we're given the sequence 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. And I can plot 
these different terms in our sequence on this graph. Here we have the value of our term, an, on the y, and the number of term, or the position, n, on the x. Our first term is 4. So we go to 1 on the x and up to 4 on the y, and we'd have a point there. Our second term is 8, so we'd go from 2 up to 8 on the y. Our third term is 12, so 3 up to 12. Our fourth term is 16, so 4 on the x and 16 on the y. And then our fifth term is 20. Notice that these create a linear graph or a straight line. That means that every point on our sequence will be on this line. And if I wanted to find the halfway point between our fourth term and say our second term, I could take the value of my fourth term, which is 16. I could add it to the value of my second term, which is 8. And I could take that addition or that sum and divide it by 2. Now 16 over 8 is 24. 24 over 2 is 12. So halfway between 16 and 8 would be 12. Notice that when we find 12 is halfway between 16 and 8, if we take that back down to the x-axis, we would find that we'd be halfway between our second and our fourth term, or we'd be at our third term. So that means that using the arithmetic mean, we can find missing terms in our sequence. So let's say we were given the arithmetic sequence, 76, some missing number, and 110, and we wanted to find this missing number. This is A1, the missing number would be A2, and then 110 would be our third term, A3. If we want to find A2, then we can use the arithmetic mean. We would just add 76 and 110, and then divide it by 2. Now 76 plus 110 is 186. Take 186 and divide it by 2, and you'll get 93. So the second term in our sequence then is 93. And our sequence would be 76, 93, and 110. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is finding the sum of an arithmetic sequence. Now when we add an arithmetic sequence, or when we add a sequence, we actually end up with what's called a series. So we're trying to find the sum of an arithmetic series. Now if I want the sum of a sequence, or a series, that's the same as adding all the different terms of my sequence together. And I can write that in summation notation, I'm adding every iteration or every term together. This is my explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence, and i is the thing that's changing, and i changes between 1 and some value n. Now if you want to know what the sum of this sequence is, all you do is use either one of these two formulas. Simply replacing i with our maximum value n. So let's try using the first formula. Here I have an arithmetic series or a sequence with my terms added together. I'm adding 5 to 7, then to 9, then to 11, 13, and then 15. This sequence of numbers is an arithmetic sequence, and the common difference is 2. We're going to say that this is term 1, then this would be term 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. Now our formula says the sum of our arithmetic sequence, that's equal to, 
10 over 2 times 2 times our first term plus n minus 1 times our common difference. Now there are 6 terms in this sequence, which means n is equal to 6. Our common difference we already found is 2. In our first term, a1, that's equal to 5. So the sum would be equal to 6 over 2 times 2 times our first term, which is 5, plus n minus 1, so 6 minus 1, times our common difference of 2. So our sum is equal to 6 over 2, that's 3 times, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 6 minus 1 is 5 times 2 is also 10. 10 times 10 is 20, times 3 is 60. So our sum is equal to 60. So the sum of our arithmetic sequence then is 60, or the value of our series, however you want to call it, that's also equal to 60. Now let's try finding the sum of this arithmetic sequence. This arithmetic sequence goes on forever. And we're given, at the end of our sequence, the explicit formula for this sequence. Now because there's no final term in this sequence, or in this series, I'm going to use the other formula, where n over 2 times a1 plus a n is our sum. Now we don't know how many terms are in this sequence, so we're just going to leave n there. Our first term, a1, is 5, and then our final term is depending on how many terms there are, so I'm just going to write in my explicit formula, 2n plus 3. So my sum is equal to n over 2 times 2n plus 8. Now again, I don't know how many terms, or there are an infinite number of terms in this sequence, which means I can't go any further with this equation. And the sum of my sequence is just some value of n divided by 2 and then multiplied by 2n plus 8. So now that we know how to find the sum of an arithmetic sequence, or the value of an arithmetic series, that completes the tutorial on arithmetic sequences.